Logistic Radio Show is sponsored in part by True Love and Life Ethiopian Coffee, made with the original Ethiopian coffee bean. For more information, go to roundtable.health.com. Okay, let's get right to it, man. Let's get right to it. Uh, the hip hop, the good, bad, and the ugly. What's the impact? Has hip hop been on black culture so far? What you think, uh, Elder? Well, let's start with all, the good. Let's start with the good part. Absolutely. We always talk about what's positive. And what, what's going well, we love first, and then we correct, right? Okay, right. That's the way we do it. We we love each other, and we support, and then we correct. So yes, I'm in been, agreement with that. Yeah, you know, so you talk about hip-hop, rap. So we use those two words, you know, we interchange them. Talk about hip-hop, rap. But, but hip-hop is the, is the culture, right? Right. It, it's the culture because... Um, you talk about, um, which is left out of the conversation, break dancing, graffiti. That's all the culture, the dress, right. the clothes, you know, the attitude. That's the culture. Now, they both go hand in hand, but those are kind of two separate, you know, things when you talk about hip hop, then you talk about rap. You're talking about the music, the lyrics, then the culture. So we could, we could talk about them both because we, it, you know, we interchange those words. You know when we're talking about it, so the good it provided a platform um, for young people to express themselves where they never had that in the past. So true, you know, you, you, know, you were talking about fifty years of hip hop, rap, hip hop that they're so we're celebrating this year. So what's that? Seventy three, yeah, seventy three, seventy four, right there. Yeah. Seventy three, seventy four. I'm yeah. five years old then, you know. What are you guys back then? Five years old. All right, we're eight. all the same age. Eight. Okay, you're he a couple eight. years older than than we are. Okay, so we're five. You you're eight. I could go. I could go in the yard. I ain't have to stay on the porch. Okay, so we had to stay on the porch. We can. We had to stay on the porch. You could go in the yard, but we were all yeah. still in the neighborhood, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and so it provided a platform for young people to express themselves, to um, um, have a, a way that they can feel like they can speak to what they saw every day. But we got to understand, man, the culture back then was, it was partying. It was, you know, it was, you know, good things that were going on. Hip hop started- love, unity and safely happy. Absolutely. Fun. It started off that way. It was all about celebrating the good vibes, you know, you know, DJ Cool Herc, he was doing parties, you know, back then, just doing house parties in the neighborhood, and, and they were celebrating each other. Then they trend, that was the good, you know, <laughs> who don't like a good party, you know, who don't like good vibes, you know, you know, but then it transitioned into crime, you know, because that, that's what those guys were seeing, drugs, that's what they were seeing, death. That's what they were seeing, you know, police brutality. That's what they were seeing. It made that transition, but it stayed there, in my opinion. It stayed there. And then it was ramped up even more so when the industry saw there were dollar signs attached to that death, destruction, the demise, you know, the negativity. Um, and so that's the wave that we've been riding for. I, in my opinion, for these 50 years. And in between, there have been consciousness, you know, PE, um, Tribe Call Quest, you know, X-Clan, conscious stuff in between. But the, but the industry, if you're talking about killing your brother, calling, I don't know the language I can use, and I don't use profanity, but I use it when I'm speaking in plain terms just to, you know, speak. Can I can I do that on this platform? Yes, or? Hey, get down, get down, get because, down. Because you know we call our sisters bitches and hoes. We you know we call each other niggas. The industry loves that, and they make money off of it. They profit off of it. So, but nobody's talking about that. I talked about the good, and I'm going straight to the bad because the bad is what's amplified now. 
50 years later, nobody's having this conversation of the impact that it has had, the negative impact that hip hop rap has had on our community. And it has had a, a negative impact. We cannot deny that. No one who really wants to have a real conversation cannot say that the, the music has not had an impact on our community. If you really want to have a genuine open discussion, you can't say it hasn't. Okay. Go for it, Tommy. Well, I, I know you heard him say I'm a hip-hop professor, uh, which means I teach hip-hop at Virginia Commonwealth University, where I wrote the curriculum, um, and, and we're introducing um, um, hip-hop or uh, the cultural aspect of hip-hop. When you come to my class, which I'd love to have you, when you come to my class, all the things that you said, the majority, I noticed you said nobody, but I'm going to take it to mean you meant the majority and that you knew that there was surely at least one of us out here with you that got your back to feel exactly the same way you do, brother. So what I would say is this, though. First, I wouldn't give us 50 years of bad hip hop. Um, I would give us probably, um, I would say in the 90s, and I, I would directly relate that to two things. It was a pivotal moment when I teach this class. My pivotal moment comes when NWA enters the um, hip hop, but I don't blame NWA. So let me just make sure we're clear with that. What I say when I teach this class is that hip hop, when NWA came out, that was the beginning of the end of the culture of hip hop. That we're talking 1990, hip hop officially became a genre at that point. And so now we're not talking about hip hop as a culture. We're talking about hip hop as a music genre. Once it becomes a music genre and the uh, corporations and the music industry has decided this is a viable product and we're going to become involved, it's no longer a culture. The, well, it's still a culture, but the culture is no longer at the forefront because corporations have a bottom line. So they're not operating from a perspective of it's a culture. It could do so much for the community. They don't care about the community. Their position is what can it do for our pockets? That's number one. Number two, it directly relates to the, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, um, uh, the, letter about hip-hop the the secret letter of hip-hop the secret meeting that took place in uh 1990 lazy bone has a, a youtube uh joint where he breaks it down so two weeks ago i had a individual that flew out from uh california who was the, the head of gavin um and this brother flew out and talked to me and he had been in the record company in the record business as far back as prince like, he's 20 years my senior, so he worked Prince records. He worked Bootsy records. So he was talking to me. So I asked him if he attended the meeting. And he told me no, but he knew someone had had. And he knew that uh, Easy es manager went to that meeting. He said not only did Easy es manager go there, he was the person that disrupted the meeting. So when you take that, that meeting was saying this simply, for those who aren't aware, that hip-hop was going to invest in the privatizations of jails. They were going to take 401, our 401ks and all of our retirement money, they were going to take a portion of that and invest it in the private prisons. So what the meeting was about, where they were going to take music, they wanted the a &Rs and the record companies to sign music that would lead to, well, that would help fill the prisons. So this is what his whole thing was about. So when you say that's what's at the forefront, I would agree, but I would say because that's by design. It's, it's a social design is saying, let's take the, the worst of the music and push it to the forefront. Now, that is me, in my estimation, trying to blame a company for something. On the flip side of that, on the flip side of that, I tell this to people all the time. Just because a plate is put in front of you, you do not have to eat it. What we have become is consumers. We consume everything, and we no longer even create 
our art form. We consume what we think sells. That's why it, 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 it's no longer a culture, it's a business. So now when you go into the studio, when you go to work, you're not trying to make something that makes you feel good or something that makes you uh, vibrate higher or something that gives you a spiritual connection, but you're making something with the mindset of what will sell and what is easily exploited. So that you see, you, you take, see, you, you see how most people are uh, acting towards Andre 3000 new album where he's just playing something. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to create art. And you see how people laugh and think it's a joke because they don't understand that. Here's my, both of you gentlemen is right because two things can be right. But my point is, in a nutshell, positive people don't support positive, positive things. things. And I, I, I've been preaching that <laughs> since I came on the air. Uh, 16 years I've been promoting conscious hip hop and soul music and my point is that most positive people think you should do positive music just because they're not going to support it, they're not going to buy your book, they're not coming to your shows, they're not going to like your uh, your post or whatever, they think you should do that just because and that just didn't start, it just getting bad now you know what I'm saying, even if even if these uh, businesses is pro promoting bad things if, if the positive people support positive stuff it was e it would even out i don't want to hear all positive stuff either and i don't want to hear all negative stuff but all, for all like bb king once said bb king said he used to play gospel and he was on a corner playing gospel and the gospel guy a uh, guy came up to him and said hey man i heard you know how to play gospel and he said well play something for me so bb king played the gospel and then the guy pat him on his head and said, God going to bless you and walked away. The next guy walked up and said, hey, B.B. King, I heard you know how to play blues. So he played the blues. And when he finished playing the blues, guess what? The guy dropped some money in the hat. You know what I'm saying? B.B. King said he's been playing blues ever since. You know, when I was out here rapping, a young lady walked up to me and said, Doug, you should do gospel rap. I said, really? I said, you buy gospel rap? She said, no. <laughs> so she, I'm not going to support it, but you should do it just because. And what Fat Tommy's saying if it's a business, when I see young folks come up to me, I'll say, why you do that type of music? This is what they want to hear. Cardi, Cardi B said, if y'all like the positive stuff so much, why y'all don't buy it? So that's why she's doing what she's doing. You understand what I'm saying? So we got to look at ourselves also. Absolutely. The conversation, so back to what Brother Tommy was saying about when I mentioned nobody. I didn't, I didn't mean no one. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, what I really meant to say is those who hold the levers of power are not talking about it. And the expectation is for them not to discuss it because all they want is the end result, which is to, is to, to make money. I get that. So the conversations must start in the community, right? Because at home, we, at home. At home, right? Around the kitchen table, they need to be started in the barbershop because that's where we have our real conversations, right? In the barbershop, at the beauty salon. It need to happen there. Home, community those spaces so that the, the so the consumers can change that's first there's the onus on the consumer correct if i want negativity if i if i want to consume that then, then i'm gonna there's an appetite out there for it so the ones who are who are feeding me they're gonna keep feeding it because they know i want it okay? right but, so the conversations must be held with our children with our sons with our daughters we have to have those conversations and we must change on that level. However, um, we can't relieve the artists of their responsibility either, okay? Because we can walk and chew gum at the same time, right? We can have those local conversations. However, we must hold those artists accountable. We have to hold them accountable and we have to speak to them in a way that says, I understand that there's money attached to what you're doing. I get it because you're trying to make a living. I, Biggie, um, Juicy, his song Juicy, he opens up when he talks about, you know, this goes out to all my haters. It goes out to all the people who, who are against me. And then he says, it also goes out to the people who lived up above me who was calling the police on me for selling drugs to my people when all I was trying to do was feed my kids. And I'm That's like- crazy. Right, that I'm is like, crazy. You mad at them people because they called a cop for you because you was feeding it, feeding their kids drugs? That's crazy. That is crazy. That is crazy. That right? Is, I always, yeah. I Where's the accountability, though? 
you know, yeah, That's I right. got a, I got a record deal, but you are hating on the people who called the cops on you for selling drugs and poison That's to true. their kids. <laughs> but that is true. I, that is true. But, but my point before you jump in, but my yep. point to that is, where is the accountability? That's that's I, a good I, point. That's a good I would point. love to think that an older biggie, if he had lived, would go back and say, you know what? Let me rethink this. Let me rethink the lyrics that I that I put out there. Let me rethink how I I I I fed the community these type of images. I would love to think that he would revisit an older biggie. Right. But but you don't but you don't think that the person who played the record because there's songs that like Biggie wanted to put out something if you said something about the world trade they'd make them take that out you know what I'm saying it's like some record companies would make you take certain things out don't you think somebody in the studio or older person because Biggie was pretty young at that time sure. some older person would have been like don't you think that sounds crazy bro sure you know what I mean but 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 why is it and I know why I'm answering my own question but why do we allow and why do we relieve our artists from the responsibility? Why is it that in our music, you could, we can could call each other bitches and hoes? In our music, we can, we can call each other niggas. But in other art forms of music, they will never allow us to say anything negative about a Jew. It'll never True. happen. True. It'll True. never True. happen. It'll never get played. But they want us to feed that stuff into our spirits. It's intentional. But we have to hold the artists accountable. We have to. Now, I, I, I again, see, I always take your side, uh, uh, Elder, so uh, forgive me. But today, um, I'm going to defend the artistry that we call hip-hop um, for two reasons. One, because I teach hip-hop and I hear the children screaming out to me. And somebody has to be a voice um, I had somebody tell me I'm down in Atlanta right now that I didn't got so old and so bougie that I can't see the plight of our youth. And so I had to sit back a minute and think about this. And so here's what it occurred to me. Let's think about a young man who uh, is being raised by a single parent. His dad ain't in the house. It's just his mom. His mom is, is, is severely undereducated and underemployed. She got too many kids, and that's a whole nother problem for a whole nother day. But her son or her daughter has an opportunity to make legal money. Legal. They're not, they're not doing it. You know what they look at their mother and say? I ain't out there selling drugs, ma. I ain't killed nobody, ma. All I did was write a song about it, and I got to feed us. We offer food stamps. We offer welfare. We got a car. Yes, it's at the cost of our people, but if our people don't have enough sense to not listen to this, then I got to give them that because I can't sit here and in real life, in real life, not on racks, not in the virtual world, in the real world, I can't eat. In the real world, I am hungry. I could go rob you. I could go steal from you. I could go and, and sell drugs. But what I'm choosing to do is tell uh, hood ghetto stories for a living and people paying for it. I'm with you on that. I am because I can speak to what I see. I can speak to what I live. I can speak to what is my experience. And I must because that's being authentic. Because if I do anything else, it is not authentic. So I, 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 I'm, I'm in agreement with you on that. However, and, I, and I'm not picking on these guys, but I'm just gonna speak to them because they, they're in the, they're in the ahead, news. You, Jim Jones, Rick Ross, them cats. Um, who, them guys are almost 50 now, okay? And I get, in your youth, you can you can say those things. You talk about destruction and the drugs and the jail and and the and the drugs because that's that was your environment. But you think Rick Ross still living the ghetto? No, 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 sir. He got he got the biggest house in Georgia. So why are you still talking about that stuff? That's not your reality. So but, why yeah, hold it? Uh, no, no. Let me finish. Go ahead. Why are you still talking about that? That that garbage. Why are you still talking and why are you still glamorizing that garbage? Why are you still elevating that? 
that's not even your reality anymore. So you are 50, almost a 50 year old dude, you know, you don't have enough awareness about yourself to go, you know what? That's not my reality anymore. Let me shift something here. But because Elder, 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 could I say this? If you take Rick Ross, Meek Mill, Jim Jones, Jay-Z, if you took all of them out the picture, it's still going to pop up. Somebody else is going to come with that. And actually, I listen to Rick Ross when I get up, Rick Ross, when I get up three o'clock in the morning to go get my hustle on. That's what I listen to. Rick Ross don't make me want to go sell no drugs. And I can, if anybody who got common sense know that Rick Ross is not here selling all these bricks and saying it on the record. Anybody who got common sense. So I, it's back to us. We need to raise stronger minded people because if he can make all his money just talking craziness, why, sh why shouldn't he? Why should he go to a plant and get paid minimum wage? Whatever, why should he have to do that? And then look at our actors. Our actors can go out there and play different roles, and we don't look at them like that. I don't I don't understand. I see what you're saying. What you're saying is true. I'm not saying what you just said, but that's not gonna stop. Nobody's gonna stop doing that. Okay. I understand that. Go ahead, brother um, Tommy. But what but I would say is this having been on the inside, look the beast in the eye, know exactly what he looked like. I would say this and this is going to sound crazy, but this is the reality of it. If we really want to talk about the truth, the truth is this. Maybe they were too young when they got in the industry, but once you realize that this is how you're making money, it's hard to shift. It's hard to now say, because look at Jay-Z. You remember my biggest complaint about Jay-Z? I used to say this forever. Until Jay-Z made the 444 album, my deal with Jay-Z was Jay-Z ain't sold a brick in 100 years. Why is he still rapping about brick? He's shown no um, growth. But then when I look at it from a business side, I don't want no growth. This is still selling. Why are you not? I'm about the bottom line. Keep on selling this. Keep pushing this. And then here's the other thing. If we want to touch on it, when the enemy, when you're at war, the enemy attacks you from every direction. If this is, and I believe it is since we have the pastor on here, a spiritual battle. This is a battle of good and evil. So you have to choose a side. There are sides in the music business. Once they choose that side, they can't come back. Puff trying to be loved. He's trying to put a, a positive image on it. Ever since he started his love campaign, look at what they have done to him. They now started saying that he was involved in Tupac's murder. Then he's been accused of rape. Now they added five more names to it. The attacks is coming because he's been talking about a positive thing. That's because when you, when people say you sell your soul to the devil, they don't necessarily mean that there was a dude with horns that came up and he cut your blood and y'all took an oath. What it means is you compromised your integrity and you signed an agreement. And now, after you'd have made all this money, you're looking at them saying, yo, I don't want to do that more. I want to make positive records. And they go, nah, that's not what we signed you for. And then you start this love stuff and they go, look, if you do this, if all these things start happening, because I don't know if you're aware of this, Pastor, but I'm going to put this out there for you. I did a, some research, and you can Google it. There's the FBI files. They have a file. If you Google FBI file on Tupac Shakur and Easy e I ran across that doing some research, and there was one file on both of them. And I said, why would there be a file with Easy es name and Tupac's name? Well, the reason that file exists is because the FBI was investigating the Jewish Defense League for extorting rappers. They were telling, they had people calling rappers, telling them that they were going to kill them, and then calling the rappers and saying, we got a security force, we can help you and keep you from being murdered. So when they, the FBI was calling Easy e in to get him to go on record, and he died before they could get him in. The reason why they had Tupac on there is because they were about to call Tupac in to get him on record, and he died. The other rappers' names were detracted from the report, so I couldn't read them. But the point is this. Once you sign that deal, you signed up for that. Do not try to change your image now. And those, the powers that be, they have an agenda. It's a clear agenda. It's not just in the music. It's in the education. It's in our diet. It's in the GMO and of the marijuana. It's in everything. We under attack. Until we realize, Absolutely. us that are the righteous, that the world is actually attacking us and that we, 
When you say why, I tell you why. We the most hated man on the planet. I actually yesterday decided that I was going to embrace the term nigga. And the reason I'm going to embrace the term nigga is because the nigga doesn't exist anywhere but in America. That was a concept that was made by white slave owners. They made us. We the people, the product of this gland right here that we call America. And we are the most hated man on the planet. When I looked around the other day, I said, everybody hate us. The Chinese hate us. The Japanese hate us. The Italians hate us. The Greeks hate us. When we, we hate us. Around, people get together and always attack us. But if we say anything, if we say we don't like Italians, if we say we don't like Jews, if we say we don't like Chinese, we are instantly labeled as racist. I don't care. I know the Jewish people do it, but all of them. And then what they don't realize is when, when Hispanics sit around, they say things that are uh, racist towards us. But all every other race of people can find one common ground, and that common ground is hating on the so-called nigger in America. That's what they do. Everybody has figured out how to profit off the nigger in America, but the nigger in America. They take our art form, which is hip hop, <clears throat> created by the nigger in America. But who profits from the art form and the culture that we created? They do, because we are not in control of our art form. We are not in control of our education. We are not in control of our religion, our race. We're not in control of nothing. We're pushing narratives that have been fed to us so bad, bad to the point that it's tradition. So you have good black folks that sit up there and just are proud that I'll give a perfect example. I was doing a house on, um, on, on Melville Street. And the girl came back with a little toddler that was two or three years old in a buggy. And she said, I can't take your daughter to the store no more. And her mama said, why? Because she was stealing. She said, yeah. She said, what's she steal? All the stuff on her hand. She had three lollipops in her hand and two lollipops in her back. This is what her mama said. We don't steal. Or we don't kill. We steal. So the bar is no longer don't steal. The bar is like, you ain't kill nobody, so you're good. And so our bar keeps dropping lower and lower and lower because we're allowing other people to dictate what is supposed to be good for us. And we are eating it. That plate that they sitting in front of us, we're eating it. Sure. We're not bush we're not pushing back. We're not looking. We're not saying let's grow our own food. We're not sitting around me, you and Doug having a conversation saying, what can we do to feed our children better? We we're are consumers. We are Go ahead, Aldo. we are Go strictly ahead. consumers. We 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 don't own there's no ownership we don't own the the, the distribution the, the labels the record companies Company. um so divestment right yes it it needs to be pushed not to take food away from the artist i don't ever want to come across saying that i want to you know you know hinder those guys from feeding their family and girls, you know, ladies and gentlemen, because they're female and women and um, women in hip hop as well. Same thing. I don't want to come off as saying I, I want to hinder them from making a living. That's not what 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 I I just want to hold them accountable, hold the companies accountable, the people that have the power. We got to hold them accountable. That's we have what I want to hold accountable. We Come have to us. hold them accountable, and we have to hold the artists accountable. We have, okay. we have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. We have to. We, be, we have to be able to do those things at the same time, you know, and not um, relieve any of them from their responsibility to the community and being accountable to um, the, the, the culture and accountable to the community. Now, what about, what about, what, 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 what accountability the community have? On itself, like what's what I, what I'm saying, if they are positive hip hop, it is a lot of it. I just went to a concert in Richmond. It cost ten dollars per person, and saw this young lady from outside the country, and the place was packed. Ninety percent white people. You know what I'm saying? Ninety percent white people was there. Do we want? Do we want the conscious hip hop? Do we want that? Yes, we do. We cannot settle and say. We don't want to do better. We want to do better. We want better for our kids. We want better for our artists. We want better. We can't settle for, well, you know, the, the community don't want it. So artists, 
just give us garbage. We can't settle for that because it's hard, right? It is hard to change years and years of mind conditioning, right? That's a hard thing to do. But we can't say we can't we can't say let's not try to do it because it's hard. It is gonna be well, hard. But what I'm saying is like you you preach it to the choir right now because like I said, for 16 years, for 16 years, conscious hip hop, soul logistic radio show, we've done shows, we've done all this. You know what I mean? We've doing the work. Still, that's just because me, that's just what I like to hear. But what I'm I'm telling you is that the community have to want it. You know what I'm saying? They have I to want I don't even I don't even play that much gospel on my program, but it's a young lady from Petersburg, uh, Tiffany Cherise, got a nice gospel record out, and everybody should be going out and trying to blow this young lady up. You know what I'm saying? The positive people. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm. This is what I'm looking at. You know what I'm saying? It always been negative hip hop. It always been that. But, they, but we got the the fans are too lazy. The the listeners are too lazy. They want we want mainstream to change what they doing, so we don't have to do nothing. We don't have to. We don't have to dig for the music. I know, but let me, can I say this? Can I say this? If I feed you poison, and then tell you heal yourself, Negro. If I feed you trash, if I stab you, and then say, well, you know what? Go heal yourself. You know. Why do we accept? The artist feeding us poison and then put the brunt of the responsibility on us to, to heal ourselves. Yeah, because if you don't like something, turn the channel. Like if, 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 if your life is going sideways, if all you listen to is strippers and strippers, because listen, I don't even call half of this stuff hip hop. Because if you lip singing and you just doing stripper moves, if I can see what you're doing at a strip club, then that's stripper music. That's not even hip hop to me. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand what's what and what's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we can't, we like poison in the right hands is medicine. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? It's how you look at stuff. It's not going to stop. We can't stop somebody making you, like you said, Rick Ross. You see how Rick Ross living? He just bought a private jet. The young people looking at this. He bought a private jet, Doug. You want me to talk about positive stuff? Look what he just did. Can you show me somebody that's talking positive that got a jet? Pastor, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this, this is, this is uh, how I see it, and it is it's sad but true. Uh, if we remember when um, uh, Jesus was in front of Pontius Pilate, right? They was gonna let that man off. They say, "Yo." Uh, crowd, who should I free? <laughs> the positive people was quiet in the mud. The rowdy, uh, uh, rah rah, uh, brothers and sisters, they said Judas, uh, uh, uh his name, and the crowd went crazy. Mm -hmm. So, when people tell me this, because see, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really serious about this because I gave pushback when it really mattered. I gave pushback to the point that I don't work at a record company no more. So conscious hip hop, I'm 100% with you, but I didn't fought this battle for so long and I didn't seen it that, that I understand this and this is going to be hard and people are going to not like it. But we as a people are like trees, right? And when you, when a tree grows in order for the tree to live, guess what has to happen? Some leaves got to fall off and die. And they die so that the tree can survive. So we in a rut right now. Music is in a point where the music to me is going to get so bad that it's going to change again. It's going to get so bad because what it's doing is kids are even getting bored with it now. It's yeah, not, yeah. It's not as. It's yeah. not as. It's, it's, it's really bad. But I think we're at the 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 peak of its badness, and it's going to shift again. So I think we we we've, we've been through this twenty or thirty year rut. I can't remember of how long it's been, but of, of, of horrific music, but it's the industry trying to find its way again because what happens is we bought into their narrative and we went after chasing bags. And once they right. got us to be become bag chasers, right. they got to manipulate us. Now we're waking back up. See, I was woke in the 80s. See, I told yeah. people yesterday that being woke just means that you can see the BS and Absolutely. sidestep it. 
You know what I'm saying? If that's what that's all woke is. When you see the BS in front of you, you just step to the left a little bit and don't step right in it. Those that are not awake, step in it. Those that are not awake, eat it. Those that are awake, consume it and think, call it cake. That's what they do. But they waking up. It's, it's, they are it's waking coming. up. It's Weird. coming, and and I don't hold. The reason I I'm, I, I I don't blame the artists because it's not the artist's fault. It's the people's fault. It's America's That's fault. What? We keep trying to blame the kids. We talk about kids for gangbanging, right? We keep talking about kids for gangbanging. And I said this the other day, everybody gangbanging. The church is gangbanging. The police department is gangbanging. The uh, 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 Republican and Democratic Party is gangbanging. The, the conscious community and the unconscious community is gangbanging. Gang everybody is set up into their little tribe and they fighting each other. I mean... Take your profession. You can't get the Pentecostals to agree with the Catholics. You can't get the Muslims to agree with the Christians. We can't get mad at children when we bring them into a world of craziness and then ask them to eat and feed themselves in a sane manner when, when now, this generation we're looking at right now, these kids that are 23 were born in 2000. They can listen all day long and hear nothing but negative music, see right. nothing but negative images. The news is is, is terrible, even commercials. You have Absolutely. erectile dysfunction commercials. You have sure. homosexual commercials. You have all of this being fed to our children, and Absolutely. you are trying to get them. And when I say you, I mean but us. What I'm saying the same way that you could point out and I'm not talking about you, Elder, but Rick Ross, Meek Mill. Why don't you highlight somebody that's positive? That's what I do. I don't sit back and talk about the negative. Just push the positive. Push those positive rappers. Because if you say there's no positive music out here, that's like saying there's no positive churches out here. And we know that's not true. You know true. what I'm saying? This, you know, So we should push instead of talking what they're not doing. Let's push the ones that are doing something. That's how. That's how. I look let's at it. educate our. Let's educate ourselves and our children more so that they consume better. Because yeah. They, yeah. They, a man, a wise man, told me if you don't know no better, you can't do no better. So sure. It, it begins with education. Absolutely. My my Angelo said, "When you know better, you do better. Do better." So absolutely, and again, oh, so a wise woman once told me, "I got to change my quote." A wise woman once said, "When you know better, you woo, she, forgive me. I apologize, y'all. Don't come looking for me." A wise woman once said, "When you know better, you do better." You know better, you do better, right? So I'm I'm in agreement with you guys. We must have those conversations at the kitchen table or wherever we gather, the picnic table, at the card table. At the barber shops, at the churches, at the at the family reunions, you know, we must have those conversations. With my daughter was born in two thousand. She's she's twenty three, so she's one of the ones you're talking about that, 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 that's uh, consuming all of this stuff that they. That they and, and it's all it, it's all about a balanced diet. It's like your job as a parent that make sure it was a kid. Just give Absolutely. me the chicken and just give me a biscuit. No, yeah. as a parent, you said, no, eat some of those greens. This And, and that's the job as a program director, Absolutely. whoever, to give a balanced diet. So when your kid is watching that, you're like, well, they strippers, and well, I would rather be that. You know what I'm saying? You got to give them a choice. That's, so that's we, what I said. So we must have those conversations, hold each other accountable. You hold me right. accountable. I hold you accountable. I hold the community accountable as far as consuming certain things all the time. Be balanced. Don't just consume just the negative. Consume the positive. And I don't want to use the word blame the artist. I don't want to use that because oh, I there's some lame ones out there. I'll use it. Ed. Give me, give me. You said blame. And I'll tell you. Said I don't blame. Blame. You said blame. Oh, blame. 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 I don't want to use it though. There's some cornballs out there, no doubt. But. I don't want to blame the artist. I don't want to use that word. I want to say we have to hold them accountable. But we see, can't. here's the thing. You, the reason you can't hold them accountable, or it's going to be a little difficult, is because when you sign, when you sign a contract, right? I am dictating. It's like when you, when I, when I come to your church and I get baptized, right? 
I come to your church, you baptize me, and I, I don't know if you believe in the Trinity, but we, for the conversation, we're going to say it's the Trinity. So I get to the church and I say, man, I ain't with the Trinity. I think we should go with the one God. Then you're going to be like, no, 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 no. This doctrine has been in place. So you want me to do what you've always done. And that's what the label, the labels, when they come, they don't get to come to the label and change how the label. Just like I don't get to come to the church and change the doctrine, you don't get to come to the label and then determine that you want to now all of a sudden put out uh, R&B or some positive rap. That's not what I signed you for. So you might as well True. go on back home and do whatever it is you do. I get so that. That's where I get the but, artist like. But I agree. I agree with uh, Elder on. I hold you accountable for what you say out your mouth. For what you say out of your mouth, I hold you accountable for it. You must be able to hold them to accountability. But you like know? at the same time, though. But at the same time, why would you want to buy somebody who's saying that? At the same time, why would you want to go to a concert with somebody true. who's lip singing, who no skills? Why would you want to do that? You know what that I'm saying? True. That's my point. Again. I had a lecture the other day in class because Sexy Red was in Richmond on um on um Saturday, I believe it was a Friday. My students, all these women, right? These are, are, are pro women students. These are positive students, and they came and said they go and see Sexy Red. And I said, why? They said, because every now and then I just want to get ratchet with. It. I said, but look, once you go and buy that ticket and support it. Then you are saying I'm down with it, and if she that's comes right, out, she sells out. The promoters and everybody in the industry says this is working, but what they're saying is, but it sound good and it feel good, and I don't care if she is doing, you know, all this the box. That's the I don't care. That's the guys. problem. That's but the listen, problem guys, right there. But because it's hard, should we not try to do it? Oh, but that's we, the problem right there. Say, that's bro, the problem right there. We try all day long, you know. But, we right. we are really trying, but what it comes down to is educating the kids. See the kids. We had a we had a generation of kids who I've been taking a survey. If they was on the jury, they were all free young thugger, and they don't even care that he's innocent. They like his music, so he should be free. I said we did not like a rapper to the point that he could break the law. And then right, kill my best right, friend. Right, and then right. I just say, well, I don't care. He made a great record. We said, no, I don't mess with him because he's an idiot. We picked the well, shoes. Now they just say it ain't that bad. It ain't that serious. You're too, be, you're too serious. Because they have become desensitized. Absolutely. Guys. So that's where we at in the world. You know we can't. What they say, you can't. That's out of the box. You can't put it back in the box. We got to so, figure out. We got to be on to the next thing. If we try to go back, we can't rewrite history. We can't go backwards and change time. I don't think We're not we can. Re I don't think we should try to rewrite history. But I still believe if we don't learn the lessons from history. Oh, I agree. Yes, you, you got you. I'm with That's you right true. there, brother. True. Okay, you know. So we're not trying to go back and and redo it. We gotta learn the lessons. So I think this is a good place to start. Well, what? Well, well, I was down. I, invite, I talked to pastors and asked them to have me at the church because I told them, I tell pastors and teachers that hip-hop is a um, is an art form that can, uh, one, get people involved. Like, when they brought hip-hop to VCU, people are becoming involved. If we, if we bring hip-hop into the church, then the kids that are in the church can be swayed and be brought to light. A lot of times, from my experience, the churches that I spoke to, they're so concerned about the way the marriage is, the, the message is being carried that they're not trusting that we can tell the kids, see, you have to give it to them raw and then tell them it's not what we do. You can't just be afraid, mm. afraid mm. to give them a, an example of what's wrong. And there's a record out when I, I talked to my students, two things happened. One, they said they love NWA, that, you know, they would sign them because they ain't supposed to be a &Rs. And I go, but they said this and they talk freedom of speech. Well, then... They only know the Straight Outta Compton album. I played the Niggas For Life album, and I say, listen to Kill a Hooker. I played to Kill a Hooker in class. Now no one wants to sign them. And I'm saying, hold it. Y'all just said there was freedom of speech. You don't get it both ways. If they free to say this, they free to say that. You have to decide which one you want to consume. 
Sure. If you're going to say everybody can do it, then we as a people, we could end it. But we as a people have to go back to say, I'm not listening to that. And when Absolutely. we do that, then it changes. Right. But that comes Absolutely. from education. And that comes from a, a group thing. The church saying, I'm going to show y'all what good hip hop is. The school saying, I'm going to show y'all what good entertainment and music is. Not saying this is all bad, bad, bad. We can't right. mess with nobody. We can't be afraid to have conversations about hip hop that are real life. One thing for certain, um, from this um, conversation, you go, you come into my church, so we'll we'll work that out. Oh Lord, I, in eight, how many years we've been doing this, Doug? Man, about sixteen. In sixteen years, let me tell you. Now, I'm not I'm not trying to put you on front street because I have been invited to a church, and then he, when he got off the air, we ain't hear from him again. I won't even go there, and I'm not gonna suggest that you will. But I will say that I put this out there. To every pastor, every time sure. I meet him saying, I can communicate with the kids, it's going to be off um, brand for the church, but sure. on topic for the community. Yeah. And so I thought the church was a safe haven for the community to come together to try to uh, uh, us become a village. And we can't be a village if we ostracize the youth that make little mistakes here and there. Sure. We have to be able to hug them after their mistakes and Absolutely. say, man, I made mistakes too. You have to be able to look at Rick Ross and say, Rick, you older now. You could do better for the community. Absolutely. No one's hugging them and saying, we still love you, man. You ain't got to constantly begrade the children. You're better than that. Why don't you buy some turkeys? Why don't you buy some sneakers and educate some people? I, I Well, I'm not like all those other cats. I ain't knocking them, but, you know, you, you're, welcome, you're welcome at my church, man. Yes, sir. We, Thank uh, you for the invite. We, I'm there when we, we can set it up. We'll work that out. For, I believe in meeting people where they are, wherever they are in life. There we go. Me too. Yes, sir. So I believe I, in that. And I love I want, I, want. I love Meek Mill. I love Jim Jones. And you talked about the turkeys and the bikes and all that stuff. And I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, um, but we need not but. However, let's build businesses. Let's build schools. You know how much money those artists have? In the, in None. It's all a uh, smoke and mirror game, brother. That's the other. No, 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 no. no. I'm, it, I'm it, talking about the money that they not so much get from uh, whatever record deal they have. A lot of them do have some. They have. Some, if, you can, if you can buy as many bikes that you can buy, as many turkeys that you can buy, and not just him, but what if they all pull their resources together? Right. How many yeah. schools they can open? How many banks that they black owned banks, and how many black people they can employ? It's okay to give people turkeys, man. You know, but them kid, them cats going right back to their miserable lives in the in right. the hood. But what Go if you what if down. you provide businesses and job yes, opportunities sir. and training for those yes, people? Sir. That will go a well, long well, way. A well, turkey well, is gone saying, in a if, week. A bike well, will last if, about a year. If if if, if uh, Rick Ross owns Wingstop, then he he is providing jobs. You know what to I'm who? saying? So to uh, whoever work at whoever work at uh, Wingstop. Wingstop. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Well, he got a bunch of wing stops. Well, I'm when I'm say where, I'm talking about what community are well, those I, wing I, I, stops well, in? Well, well, he got a bunch of wing st stops. Well, here's another thing. We look it's at one thing like to have a business, but it's, if you are not directly impacting that neighborhood where 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 auntie that live in the neighborhood go to, to that to that business and work and then that money is spent, what's the use of having a wing stop? If if me going to if, if it's not employed. Um, the community that live in that, and you know, the people that live in that community. You, well, I'm gonna get me. the best person. I'm gonna get the best person that work that's gonna work my uh I'm gonna, my, my I'm company. Gonna get, I'm not gonna just get. We just had this conversation last you week. Think, I'm not gonna think, get just because he's. Do you think white people hire white uh, the best person for the job? No. Yes. I think. I, I no. Don't. Yes. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yes. Why? Don't. So why? So why can a, a a mediocre white man get a job before an overqualified black man that applied for the same job when the hiring manager is white? Well, you tell me it's because they're well, hiring. Well, if a you're, mediocre, if you're, if you're a, a mediocre business, white man if will. If you're hold on, if you're a smart business person, you're gonna hire the right person for the job. If you're a smart business person, Wait now if you're on some other, if you're on some other stuff. Then who knows what you might do? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. I, I gotta respectfully. I love 
Hitler to death. My man Hitler, uh, Hannibal Smith, uh, uh, Doug Evans. Uh, but I would totally disagree because let's give some examples. I just did a job for somebody and I looked around and it occurred to me, I saw all these Hispanics come to the job, right? And I noticed that Hispanic construction companies don't hire black people. And I'm not saying there isn't one. I'm sure if we all ride down the highway, we'll point to one. But the vast majority of them do not. When I look at Italian restaurants, Chinese restaurants, when I go in any of them restaurants, Greek restaurants, black people that work there are the dishwasher, period. So when people say this, when, when people say that people hire the best person for the job, I used to tell people this. They invented the rule nepotism so we wouldn't hire our cousins. But I know people, companies that have rules against nepotism and participate in it all the time. They Absolutely. Make these rules, and what happens is when they make the rules, we're so righteous, we follow the rules. Absolutely, we want to hire the best person for the job, but I'm beyond that. I really believe that we have to hire, uh, first and foremost, we have to hire people from our community, period. And then if we can't find the, somebody, after I can't find somebody, when I'm at the very bottom of the barrel and I go, well, dad, no, no, no. It, it's either this one or that one, then I got to go that way. But, but I do. But I do you. No, no, no. But I do you. I do you. But I do you one more. I do you one more. You, if they're not qualified, train them. Train them. That's what AD told me. Look, when AD hired me at Warner Brothers, he told me by all stats, I'm not qualified. BC, you just told me I wasn't qualified, but they willing to train me. So train if, them. If they're not qualified, that's a, a great opportunity for us to better the community. Train them. If they're black and they don't and they're not the best, train them. If they're um, willing to learn, train them. White people hire white people, bro. Why shouldn't we hire ourselves? The vast majority of them. The, and, the, and, the and, vast and, majority of them, 99.9% .9 of them, hire and themselves, don't. and we you, don't. We, we, this is the things that, I, that when I look at these 58 years I've been on the planet, I say this. When we get in the jury pool, right, when there's 12 of us in the jury, we actually listen to the case, and then we listen, and if the black dude did wrong, we serve him up and send him to jail. They listen to the case and could care less if the black man did right or wrong, and they serve them up and send them to jail. They don't listen to the case because if they nope. listen to the case, they would let it wouldn't be this many locked up black people who are innocent. Right, they right. are on a mission when and, and Doug, you know this. They stay on code. Staying on code means this. It don't just mean to show up at the rally. It means whenever you have a chance to disenfranchise a black man, take it. Whenever take you have it. an opportunity to lock a black man up, take lock it. Him whenever up. Whenever you have the opportunity to get away with running over a black man, run him over. Run him over. That's we was talking man. about. We can't hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we, hold on. We're not talking about being on code. Of course, that's on code. But let's let's just take it back to hip hop for a second. If we talk about being on code, let's talk about ourselves. For okay. example, we know that we know the problem Joe Smith and his wife was having, right? They was having a little problem. Okay, Joe Smith, the basketball player, him and his wife. His wife had an only fan behind his back, oh, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so his wife calls into a hip hop show, Cameron and Mace. Guess what happened? They fly hers out, fly her out to the show, and she gives Cameron a massage. And it is all hip hop, and it's just us, right? No whitey in sight. That's totally disrespectful, off code, bro code, hip hop code, all codes. We just did that. And Mace supposed to be the preacher. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We all off code. We've been off code. It ain't nothing for a black man to be off code. We right, not I'm on code. Get, I, like, That's, they, I, I'm not. I'm trying to get us on. Just because this yeah. us, but this is us. This is I us. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. I don't white disagree man with that. In sight. But, but to get back to but, what the, the point that I was making about about the the, the wing stop. So is it no, wing what stop? I'm saying. No, is no, what I'm stop? saying. Yes, sir. Wing stop. So what I'm saying, if I would have hired the best person qualified, they would have known to stay on code, and they wouldn't have done that foolishness. OK, but I got the black brothers and look what the brothers did. They served the brother up. They didn't care how that brother looked. Sure. His wife, he's trying to patch it up with his wife. But sure. the brothers, hip hop brothers, look what they did.
Wait, now, wait, 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 wait. If your wife gives massages, I can hire her. I can't. Come on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on, 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 on Fat. Hold on, hold on, Fat. Hold on, Fat. Wait, 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 Fat Tommy. Wait, Fat Tommy. If I knew you and your wife was having problems. Okay. Now, come on. And, and uh, Elder going to surprise me with a massage from your wife. True. Come on, if my wife you is know a masseuse, If my wife is a masseuse, then she need to be out there massaging. That's now you see our problem? Now you see our problem? Now you see our I bought into my wife's career. That you talking two different things. If my no, wife we talking about code. You was talking about being on code, right? Yeah, but Doug, I but that's want, not bro code. You know what? I would not fault you because here, here, here's what I would believe. I would believe that uh, Pastor Elder that just gave me some money because my wife got a massage business, so he buying black. I'm applauding him for buying black. I, what you think, I Elder? Tell my wife to no. stop giving massages. Honey, that's not a good job for you. I can't no. take it because when, when Deion Sanders or Cameron or Doug Evans fly you in and want to put you on TV massaging them, I'm going to get in my feelings. So I think that, you need a different job. That, but that, ain't that needs to be a... With a code. A code that, is... That is bro black. code. That's bro code. What you no, talking about? That's bro code. Let's they have a... Let me, let me say this. That needs to be an in-house conversation between him and her, first of all, right? Yes. For, right, first and foremost, that has yeah, to be right, right. But, but, elder, hold on, obviously, hold on, 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 Cameron or whoever called her to, to fly right. her out. Right? Sure. I get what you're saying, Doug. I get that. But that's still an in-house situation. That's, but it's still, that, bro, it's, it's still, we're talking about staying on code. We're talking what? about being on code. How, listen, how are you going to hold rappers accountable? This is where we started from, holding people accountable when a black man knew Another black man was having problems in, in his marriage. And if you want to send some money, just send us some money or send another massage. You sent his wife, a pastor, send his wife to give him a massage on social media. Let me how are we going to say, how are we going to say in one breath, hold people accountable? And on two, we're talking about code. Let me you just broke two codes. What, what, if, what, if, what if his wife cut grass? Could I, could, am I allowed to fly her out to cut my yard? Can she if, come cut my grass? If she's a landscaper, can I fly her out to cut my grass? You know, you know damn well cutting grass and massaging somebody uh, naked back is two different things. No, it's But you not, know what? It's but you not know, two different it, things, it Doug. It's not two I, different I, things because, listen, I allow, if, if I'm dating you, right, and I marry you and your job is a massage person, then I accepted that, Doug. I can't now. Now you're trying to say, here's the thing. When you, and first let me go on record by saying I've been married 24 years. Okay. I got 24 years under my belt. If you marry somebody who gives massages, you have, if I marry, uh, I heard this on the radio the other day, and this is a prime example. A dude married Shorty. She had a fans only page or only fans, whatever it's called. She getting money. So she ain't made no new posts. But he came home, found out she had a fans only page and found out that's how she paid money. She said, I haven't made no new posts since we've been dating. So all them posts is old. People is looking at old stuff. That's how I get my money. He wanted her to take it down. She said, I ain't taking it down. We got to break up because this is how I eat. And then I take it down and then you leave me and I don't have no job. She started a business. If you have a business, I don't care for some massage parlor. If you got a massage business and that's your job, you can't get mad at me for hiring your wife for what she do. At no point, ain't no bro code. Yes, I could be really look, Doug. Let's the, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, to me, to me, you going around in circles. Let me let's let's start here. Fact, Tommy. If you and your wife was going through it. And on camera right now, while I'm talking, I say, I'm about to get me a massage, y'all. Okay. And I take my shirt off, and your wife come in and start giving me a massage. And, and Elder say, I sent you a massage to help you out, Doug. And then the table come out, and she started giving me a massage. You don't have a problem with that. 
If she's a masseuse, no. That's her job. All right. She's a masseuse, Doug. If she was a... If, listen... What if she's a she also was a trainer? she also she listen she also was a porn she also was a porn star. What but if, if I if, 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 but, but if, if we don't go, what, what if she was a chiropractor and you had listen, back problems? You took your shirt on. off and she snapped your back. She got behind but, you, wrapped up, and hit you from behind and said, "Oh, but, how that feel? What I'm supposed to do?" But listen, we are talking about holding accountable, and we are talking about code. So that's what yeah. we are talking about. Yes, now, if I'm your so, personal friend, wait, if I'm your friend, this, Doug, if I'm your friend and your wife cuts grass and you and her is beefing, I'm not hiring your wife to cut my grass because I don't want to be that's in a in-house situation. It's a, it's me, and you, sure, 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 sure. me and you are friends that's what I'm and talking I, don't wanna, about. I know you're not, you're having a problem with your but if I don't know you, Doug, I don't yeah. know you. Your wife is but, a masseuse, and all I know is you and her having problems, and I don't know you, and I don't know your wife. I still get to hire her. I want a nice young lady that look good to give me a massage. I ain't got nothing to do with the fact that you and her can't work out your so, wedding so, problems. So, so, listen, that's an in-house, so that's an so, in-house so, conversation so, again that they both must have between yeah, the two of them. Between, but, now, but, but, but hold on, but El, Elder, listen very close to what he's saying. If I don't know you. Then I really don't care, and that's back to the rappers. I don't because know I don't you. Know I'm gonna do what it takes to get paid. Sure. That's basically what he's saying. I, I that get that. Not what he's saying? I that get is that. Exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying I, I get want to hire somebody, but so it's not going to change, bro. The reason it's why not it change. Is, is different because the woman has a job. You talking about? So anytime a woman get in a, an argument, a woman and a man get in an argument with their husband, she's not supposed to go to work. If if we are hip hop community and it's on bro code and we stick it to the code and we care about one one another, if I know you having problems in your marriage, if I want to help you, I might just send some money to you, fat Tommy. But I'm not gonna get your wife. You know that's bro code. You know that don't look right. You know I can agree. Right. I can I, I can agree with him on that point. All right, I do agree with 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 um Doug on that point. I I I gotta go with him on that. I, I just think if we're However, friends, it only counts if we're friends. But if I don't know you, Doug, if you I don't know each son, other, right. right? There's no responsibility because I don't so, know you. So, so elder, so elder, how on one point, if I don't know you, is no responsibility. But to the rappers, you telling me that we have to hold them accountable for what they're saying when they don't know these things because they're because it's the they're, same thing. It's a no messages. It's a messages. You said rap. money. You said fat time. You said that's how she make her money, right? Yes, sir. Right. So, and if I don't know you, then I don't care. So Rick Ross, he don't know all these fans. He's trying to make his money. So why hold him accountable for what he's saying? Bro code accountability. Here, that's what we're why. talking about. Here's why I can tell you why. Look at two chains. Two chains and Megan the Stallion. Both have college degrees. Both of them are very wise, informed, and educated individuals. They are purposefully, purposefully destroying the community with knowledge. They are not an unwitting, unknowingly combatant. They know Correct. exactly what they're doing. They're taking Absolutely. advantage of a person. When I did that, my back was truly just hurting, Doug. I just yeah. flew in town. I'm in pain. I need a chiropractor. I need my back massage. I'm not trying to do nothing else. I'm not I trying to destroy different. your wife. I'm just trying it's to different. feel better. It is different. It is different. Now let me let me bring this back to the wing stop because oh, yeah, I gotta pastor. say come on we need a pastor in there for we ruined our show we need one hundred next week we bring this back to the wing stop because who who owns the wing Rick Ross Rick Ross Rick Ross if Rick Ross really wants to impact the, the black community the community that he come out of because he come out of the, those communities he don't live there no more he would make an effort to hire those people to train those people. That, that they will be the best workers. Not just, if I open up a wing stop in another type of community, the people who live there are the ones that are going to get those jobs, right? Right? Right, right. So so if he opens those wing stops inside of those black communities, he has to make an effort to hire those people, to train those people, to train those guys that are standing on the block who want to do something more than just stand on the block. He got to make an effort. If he's doing that, then I'm going to clap and I'm going to applaud him. But if you just say, I, I got wing stops and, 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 they're, and they're just wherever they are, you know, and, you, and you're talking about, well, I give turkeys and bikes, you know, 
Fine. You give turkeys and bikes to people who live in poverty. They eat for a whole week at Thanksgiving, and then they go back to the struggling and doing what they're doing. Make a real impact. Make a real impact, man. You know, because it's all economics. Our plight is all tied down yeah, to the hold economics. On, hold, on, well, hold on, hold on. I think it's a little unfair. If the man have a wing stop, of course he's going to try to hire people. We know some of these people don't want to work. And second of all, why everybody, hip hop, uh, hip hop been around 50 years, but how long jazz and R&B been around? We don't ask them to uh, uh, build a distribution center. Where's Smokey Robinson? What happened to all Luther Vandross? We don't ask all of them to do all that stuff. <laughs> That's because, one, they wasn't generating the amount of money that these rappers You generated. crazy. All that, Brad Gordon, I didn't hear nobody ask Bill, Brad Gordon build a hospital. <laughs> Uh, I think did they, they did ask him to build a hospital. I don't think well, he did. Did he? Did he? Did he? Did he build? Did he build one? He I had mean, Jackson I, Five, Dana Ross, Marvin Gaye. He had everybody. What you talking about? Well, and, and the reason now, why I now the man now the man built a wheel stop. No, no, no. The reason why churches, and you still got a problem with him. No, no, no. I'm not suggesting that he. You know, it's anything wrong with giving out turkeys, man. I'm not saying that because people need to eat. All right. However. What's the what's this saying? You give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach the man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That's the concept, is what I'm talking about. I you feel know, you. You know, that's all I'm saying. Because again, it's ownership, man. Ownership is what will 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 pick up our people. Ownership, businesses, it's it's all economics. And if if we were all pool our resources together. If we will all start at the community level, educating our people for, for success, changing our minds, our, our habits, what we consume, training. Brother Tommy is doing excellent work. He teaches. That's putting knowledge in people's minds in the, in the youth. That's where it's got to start. The next I level know. of that the next level is economics, jobs, Co not working for somebody, not working for somebody, but having our own resources, circulating those dollars in our own communities. You will never go into a Chinese God. restaurant and not see Chinese people working in there, That's but true. they are in our communities. You right. don't see no black people. And like Brother Tommy said, they might be in the back busting sun. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but you're but, not going to see them at the register. You're not gonna see them any place else. So why? So why are we going in there? Because they and they are in our communities, and we are but consumers. Look, but because look, we are consumers. But here's the point. Mentality. Here's the here's the point. We could build the same one right beside them. I bet we go out of business. Well, I bet you we know go why? Out of business. You know why we'll go out of business? Do you know why we'll go out of business? Why? Don't you understand that that black businesses don't have access to the same resources that white businesses and that those That's Chinese true. businesses? We don't That's have access true. to. to that. We don't. They don't give us the loans. That's why the mom and pop store is barely hanging on. But we do got access to the people, though. So the people, if they saw that we had something going on, they could come and patronize us, but they won't. But, why? But you know that. That's a but why. But, but, but brother Doug, don't you know that's why the mom and pop store is still open because we do go in there? Yeah, just yeah, some of them, but it's not. No, 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 no. A lot of us going in there. But that's why they're hanging on. They don't have the access to the to the um, resources that those black that those that those white businesses have. They that's don't. True. That's true. So it's it's not even it's not even a a a a a, 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 a um. The, the playing field is not even level when that's concerned. But but my larger point for this, guys, is I'm all for changing the minds of our people. We got to do that. I'm, we have to hold the community responsible. I don't blame the artists. I still say we have to hold them accountable also. And the, and the, and the people who hold the levers of power. Divestment is the best. You know when they started that um, hashtag Mute R. Kelly. You remember that? Yeah. Well, you know how long it took for them to really get that um, done? It wasn't overnight. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to 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 um to bring down an artist in the industry. 
It don't happen overnight. It don't happen overnight. But see, so, Pastor, uh, right there, see, it's because we're focusing on the wrong thing, I think. I think the focus needs to be more on the business and the industry more so than the artists. We blame and it's just like the 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 gun companies don't want to take responsibility for the guns. We have the whole corporate America responsible because the corporations is pushing a narrative and money. This is a capitalist society. Money, cash rules everything around me. We not we gonna change this with uh, 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 uh So we have to come together with what we have to do is get back to the things that we know work. We were into cooperative economics. They say it don't work, but I say if you go in any project in America, somebody say, yo, I got the bread, I got the cheese, can somebody go get some bologna? And then everybody come together and they put their packs together and feed everybody. It's been going on like that my entire life. That's why they don't starve in the projects because they'll figure out cooperative economics. So if it works at the very low level, what happens is when we matriculate out of these areas and then we think we made it, we forget about cooperative economics. We forget about pooling our resources. We forget about helping the dude next door who can't eat, who need mustard, and it's not their fault. Or we looking at them because they like crackheads and we still think now they don't have to eat. eat. We can't do that. We have to get back to where we as a people, and it comes down to one thing. They are masters at keeping us from loving each other. It's Absolutely. all about lack of self-love. If we get it the is. self-love and the self-respect back, then we won't have to worry about the industry because it was a time when somebody would say, I'm not going to say bend over and let that breathe. I'm not going to make a record like that. I'm, That's my right. mother raised me better than that. Absolutely. You know, I'm not going to play a record like that because my mother might walk in this club and I'm not going to repeat a song like that. But we're Absolutely. Not, you know, we used to sneak in there and play the eight track in the closet where our parents couldn't hear it. Now we playing what we used to sit in the closet and sneak and hide and play. We are right playing the on the radio. Absolutely. In the middle of the daytime. Absolutely. So let's so, think about what we can do as a people to to to, to change the narrative because we know. So elder, problem. so elder, uh, appreciate you and thank you uh, for coming. We're gonna have this discussion. You might do it live on, on Facebook one of these days. But I'm gonna give you a last response to sum this up: the good, the bad, and the ugly of hip hop. Go. Yeah, yeah. Hip, hip hop has been good for us. It has been. It has provided an opportunity and a platform for our the, our youth, our disenfranchised, to have a voice, to be able to speak out, to have to be able to vocalize their pain. The bad is the the industry. Uh, are, um, they've been um, people who have taken advantage of those disenfranchised. They have taken advantage of the, those young people, and they push in a narrative that they know is that will sell and the ugly part of it my is my sound died so i don't know if y'all can hear me but the, the 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 ugly part of it is is that um we we are afraid some of us have been afraid to talk about these things and to bring it to the forefront and to hold ourselves accountable number one and then hold the industry the people who hold the levers of power um hold them accountable and we must hold the artists we can do all three of those things at the same time, and we can do it in love, and we can do it to, up, to uphold um, each other. And and I think if we focus on those things, I think we'll be in a better place 50 years from now. I may not be around on 55. I may not be You'll around. Be right. You'll be around. <laughs> I may not be around to see it, but can I'm hoping. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm hopeful, guys. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm not discouraged about this, and I'm not. And I'm. I'm not giving up. And I'm not saying there's nothing. I'm not throwing up my hands and saying there's nothing we can do. I am hopeful, and I think the cycle's gonna change by the time he said it. It's gonna change. I may not see it in my lifetime, but I believe it's gonna change.